Hello. I'm going to talk about the defense in depth of secure embedded systems with reference to the Swiss cheese model. Cyber security is a concern across the safety critical sectors. In November 2011, hackers were alleged to have destroyed a pump used to pipe water to thousands of homes in a US city in Illinois. They are thought to have used their access to the utilities network to break the pump by turn it, turning it on and off quickly. At the Roxcorn Breakpoint Security Conference in 2012, Barnaby Jack showed how an attacker with a laptop located up to 50 feet from a victim could remotely hack a pacemaker and deliver an 830 volt shock. In November 2014, it was reported that a blast furnace at a German steel mill suffered massive damage following a cyber attack on the plant's network. Attackers were said to have used booby-trapped emails to steal logins that gave them access to the mill's control systems. This led to parts of the plant failing and meant that a blast furnace could not be shut down as normal. In 2015, it was reported that Chris Valasek and Charlie Miller had managed to hack into a Jeep car, showing that it was not necessary to physically access a car to compromise its security. And in November 2016, San Francisco's public transit riders got what seemed like a Black Friday surprise. The system wouldn't take their money. Someone had attacked the computer system and was demanding a ransom. In order to address the security conundrum, it is useful to borrow an analogy from the world of medicine. In March 2000, Professor James Reason proposed the Swiss cheese analogy to explain how system accidents occur in medical environments. Many aspects of medical endeavour require human input and the inevitable human error that goes with it but generally there are so many levels of defence that for a catastrophe to happen an entire sequence of failures is required such that none of the defence is prevented. Professor Reason likened this principle to a sequence of slices of Swiss cheese except that in his model the holes in the slices are forever moving, closing, widening and shrinking. Here is an example of how the model applies to human systems. As we all know, people are fallible. But if we deploy several people to confirm the status of critical systems, then we reduce the risk of a problem occurring. This platform assistant is dispatching a train. Before the train leaves the station, the dispatcher checks the signal and raises her baton to signal to the guard. The guard checks the signal gets onto the train and uses an electronic bu buzzer to tell the driver to go. The driver checks the signal and drives the train out of the station. For the train to leave the station on a red signal three people must all make wrong decisions. The hole in three slices of Swiss cheese must all align. Cyber security is a continuously evolving game. Hackers don't stand still just because you've made life more difficult. Just like the checks and controls applicable to the railway, a multiple level of approach to security makes a great deal of sense so that if the bad guys get past the first line of defence, then others are in waiting. The Swiss cheese model illustrates why. No connected system is ever going to be both useful and absolutely impenetrable it makes sense to protect it proportionately to the level of risk involved if it were to be compromised and that means applying defence in depth. Like railway workers none of our techniques is infallible but they too can work in combination in this case to minimise the risk of successful cyber attack. But hang on a minute that's all very well you might think we can all apply every possible security precaution to every possible software architecture and application. 
but surely that would be disproportionately expensive. This house in Hertzville, Sydney has 24 security cameras, 18 searchlights and two reinforced steel gates. The 770 square metre single storey house also has roller shutters and bars on doors and windows. The security system costs more than a third of the sum that the owners paid for the house. We could design our embedded systems using that approach, but would it be practical and if not, how can anybody judge what to apply and where? To address that conundrum we'll look at an example. We'll consider the interaction between domain separation and secure application code development. The use of separation kernels and hypervisors is becoming increasingly popular in the automotive industry with the aim of ensuring that critical systems cannot be compromised via an attack on more benign systems. In this trivial example each of the virtual machines is assigned the least privilege it can have in order to achieve its aims. That's a very good principle to follow but a diagram is simplistic. Potential vulnerabilities arise because many systems need to communicate across domains. For example, central locking generally belongs to a fairly benign domain, but in an emergency system after an accident it becomes imperative that doors are unlocked, implying communication with a more critical domain. Whatever the mechanisms used for communication between virtual machines, their implementation must be secure. But by limiting the application of rigorous secure code development techniques to high risk code, an acceptable level of security can be achieved while keeping costs within budget. Secure code can be developed by adhering to practices such as those recommended by the CERT organization. This approach sees secure code actively contribute to the effectiveness of the underlying architecture by helping to defend its weak points minimizing the chances of Swiss cheese holes alignment. That's just one example of how Swiss cheese model of defense in depth works in practice, combining imperfect techniques to make the system as a whole much more difficult to penetrate by would-be attackers. <laughs>